Three Minute Thursdays. It's your source of animal rights news and gossip packed into a short, sweet three minutes on everyone's favorite day, which of course is a Thursday. Uh, hello and welcome to episode 128, I think, by who's counting, uh, which is going to be heavy on the news side of Three Minute Thursdays and less on the gossip portion as we take a dive into the pressure campaign to close MBR Acres after this weekend when five beagles were successfully liberated from the facility. Welcome, as always, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification, give me a like if you like what you're seeing, don't like it, don't like it. Follow along on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm gonna be making some European speaking day announcements, which I'm pretty stoked on. We're gonna start voting on where we send thousands of dollars over the Patreon, if you wanna join there for as little as $2 a month. And the final episode of season one, Radicals and Revolutionaries, is up now if you want to check that out as well. Last episode, and probably until the fall, which is a little, a little sad. So lots of things have happened over at MBR Acres in the UK that I think is worth taking a look at. Taking a look at all of it, um, I feel like there's a lot of lessons and inspiration that we can take from this campaign thus far, and I think there's going to be a lot more to come. And it's also coming on the heels of identical breeding facilities being closed in the US. These over here are owned by Invigo. Uh, Innotive, or whatever it's called, it's Invigo's parent company. They are closing two facilities in Virginia because of restructuring. But in reality, it's because of investigations by animal organizations, which led to public outcry and activist pressure to close it. So we're looking and hoping for a third victory pretty soon over in England at MBR. So a quick recap. MBR Acres is a breeding facility near Huntington in the UK. They breed beagle dogs and then send them off to labs around the country to be used in experiments where they eventually will be killed. They will house up to 2,000 beagles at any given time and they regularly ship them out to labs. You may have seen this, this, this photo of the 82 beagles liberated from there in 1990 by Barry Horn, John Curtin, and more. Uh, Self-promoting side note, if you want to hear how they did it, uh, episode 12 and episode 13 on the podcast, Radicals and Revolutionaries, interview with John Curtin. It tells you the whole story. It's amazing. Check it out. So last year, a protest campaign was launched to target MBR acres, and it was called Free the MBR Beagles. This included undercover footage of beagles being transported from building to building uh, and, and beagles put into vans headed out to their death. It also included protests outside of MBR, which included one where people just kind of decided they weren't going to be leaving. And from there, Camp Beagle was born. Uh, it, it's a separate group of people with the same goal in mind, shutting down MBR acres. The, the camp is coming up on a year outside of the facility, if I, if I remember correctly. They've been holding 24 hours of resistance day in and day out, right? Teach-ins, protests, live streams, you name it. They're doing it. Separate from all of that is another group of folks who discovered that the company driving all the beagles to their demise was a company called Impex. So they began another secondary target campaign going after them, which saw a lot of success. Transporting beagles out of the facility, which was a regular thing, ended up taking you know a month or two to happen. Celebrities have chimed in, including Ricky Gervais uh, and singer Will Young, who handcuffed himself to the gates of MBR uh, in November. And now another organization has joined the fight, Animal Freedom Movement, which is an offshoot of Animal Rebellion. They scaled the walls of the facility and occupied it last weekend. 25 activists entered the breeder with banners uh, and, and refused to leave. They also gathered footage of the dog's conditions on the inside. So not only were they like immediately resisting, they were also gaining a lot of information and knowledge of what was going on inside the farm. But it doesn't end there. The following day, as Camp Beagle organizers were in London in court on an unrelated incident, animal freedom movement activists returned. They scaled the walls and managed to get away with five beagles, which is pretty amazing. So far, uh, we've gotten to see uh, the beagles after their liberation, before they headed out to safe homes. And we also got to see this cop helping activists get over the fence. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, I'll take it. 12 people would be arrested, uh, including the three actual beagle liberators who chose to take the open rescue approach by turning themselves over to the police the next day. So on Instagram, they stated they, quote, refuse to hide the action behind masks and that they want to, quote, have a trial with a jury to give the British public a chance to reject animal testing. And I think that gets, uh, gets everyone up to speed. So I'll be curious to see how these new legal cases play out, right? The necessity defense and, and trying to turn these cases into show trials 
haven't worked out that well so far in, in this iteration of the animal rights movement, at least here in the United States. It's not totally out of the question, right, as the necessity defense has worked in the environmental movement recently with valve turners who were shutting down pipelines. Um, they won their case on necessity. But in the animal rights movement in the U.S., not so much. So it'll be interesting to see how all this plays out in the UK. And of course, Animal Rebellion has had a good string of victories in court, right? As cases have been dismissed against uh, them uh, in various actions. But this, as far as I'm aware, is the first time Animal Rebellion will uh, will be involved with burglary charges stemming from the liberation of animals. Of course, if that's not true, please drop me a correction down in the comments. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. And, and as always, I hope everyone, including the Beagles, I hope they stay free. So the thing I love about this campaign is that I think it represents like all the puzzle pieces and all the people. It's inviting to everyone who wants to come out and see this place closed, regardless if you're vegan or not. That's not to say like veganism isn't an important component or that it's not talked about. It's just not like the immediate requirement for people to come and take action. Also, the campaign's core is grassroots. It's people from all walks of life and backgrounds coming together to stop something that is just like pure evil. It's people starting their own groups in order to participate in the campaign how they want. It's various groups celebrating each other, even if it's not the tactics they would personally undertake. For instance, like the people at Camp Beagle choose to stay outside of the gates at MBR, while Animal Freedom Movement, they have chosen to go over them. But they can both appreciate one another, you know, bringing their pieces to the puzzle to target this specific place. You have people using all the strategic tools in the toolbox to target MBR acres. You have protesters, campers, drone operators, secondary and tertiary target campaigners. You have those going over the walls when they least expect it. You have occupiers, you have liberators, you have educators and teachers and legislators. You have fundraisers and designers and video producers all doing what they each do best together to go after this one specific target. And when you do that, you galvanize a movement. You get people excited, and this is a perfect example. The movement is excited. And you get more and more people to turn up and add their special talents and add their special tactics and pieces to the bigger puzzle. And win or lose, that remains to be seen, but you have something beautiful happening outside and now inside of this hell for animals. You have resistance. You have grassroots mobilization. You have a reminder that we have the ability to win. And that can only get bigger, and it can only get better, and it can only become more victorious if we all keep fighting.